Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make a DDP image master for sending to a CD factory in one command. And then in one other command I'll show you how to make all your WAV files for all the tracks to send off to all the streaming services. Um, this video assumes you should also watch the CD mastering video which shows you how to set up the CD text in all the markers that you see in front of you. If you go into the DDP editor under the markers menu you could see all your markers there with all the text, the tracks, titles, ISRC codes, performer, songwriters, etc. All the information that goes on the CD text um, and it, all that's explained in the previous CD. To make this into a um, into a finished master all we do is we select all of the audio on the track so to do that we're going to go to time selection to track this command shift option command T that sets the time selection to everything on the track and then you simply do the command File, Consolidate, Render, Export, Export, QWave, CDT, DDP. It's one single command. Now we click that command. First thing's going to ask, do you want to render the audio? If you've already rendered the audio once and you just move the markers around again, you don't need to re-render the audio. So I've already rendered the audio, so I'm going to skip that. If you click yes here, it will then render the audio for you as well. So I'm going to click no here. And now I just have to show it where is the audio file that I already rendered. Here's the wave image that I already rendered. Open that. And about one second, it finishes and it does QCDT and PQ listing files already written. We'll look at those in a minute. And you'll notice it also now created regions up here. And the, the names, each of those regions goes from one CD track marker to the next and takes its name from the CD text name. So those are going to be ready to export and they'll exactly match your CD, your physical CD. So we click OK here. Now it says do you want to make a DDP image? We say OK. Then it asks us to choose the folder where you're going to put it. So let's create a new folder here and let's call it test DDP4. Okay. So I create a new folder, click open, and going to make the DDP image now, say OK. It's now making the DDP image. This takes a few seconds, um, depending on your disk and your computer, etc. This is making a full hour-long CD DDP image. It'll be done in another few seconds, probably takes 10 or 15 seconds. There it is, all done. DDP image is created and ready to go to the factory at this point. Click OK, close. Now, I'm going to show you some other important features in Kohler Classical that are really quite unique. Um, there are two modes of time code in Kohler Classical. One is called track time, the other is regular time. So you'll notice in regular time here, this marker number one is a time code 7 minutes, 33 seconds, 62 frames, and 994 samples. Not a very convenient time. Because it doesn't matter where we put these markers ahead of time, the Kohler Classical software will automatically frame align them perfectly. Now if we want to see both the runtime of the CD as well as the track time, we can do that very simply. The track time we can do with a click um, and then the, I'll show you how to do the runtime also. But if we go into time code and click to track time here, you'll notice now it says zero here because that's the beginning of track one. If I go to track two, it's also zero because it's beginning of track two. And as it plays from track one into track two, you'll see it's coming towards the end of the first track. And then it comes to track two and the time code will go back to zero right at track two. There it is. Now we're on track two. Okay, and in fact, in track time mode, it also plays inter track gaps exactly as a CD player would. So I go to track three, that's also at zero. If I go to the next marker, you'll notice now it says negative four seconds and eight frames. And you'll notice it's always zero samples because these are all exactly sample aligned to the frame. 
So if I zoom in here, you'll see that's because marker 10 here is the end of the third track of the CD, which starts an intertrack gap that's four seconds and eight frames long. And as you play that on a CD player, it plays negative time code until it gets to the next marker where it resets to zero. And now you're into the fourth track. And now you can see we're six minutes, uh, six seconds, 52 frames, and 186 samples into the fourth track. So you notice as we go from track to track in track time mode, each track resets to zero. That 97 marker there is the album marker that has the album information. That's why it's not a zero. It's in the middle of a track somewhere. But beginning of each track is at zero. There's an end of a track. There's a four second intertrack gap beginning in the next track. 3 second and 26 frame intertrack gap, beginning of the next track, and there's the end of the disc. Everyone sample aligned precisely to the frame. Now if we want to see the actual runtime of the CD, first of all we have to go out of track time mode, back into regular time code mode, so we click off of track time, and then we need to set it so that marker number one is at either zero or two seconds. If you want it to match your track listing that you get from the PQ code sheet, you should set it to two seconds because there's always a two second pre-gap on a CD. But on the player window, it, it shows from time code zero. So it depends which you want to see. If you want to see two seconds as your starting time, what I would do is you go to marker number one, use command J, which is the go-to command, and, and type minus two. That'll move the cursor two seconds before track one, exactly two seconds before. Now we want that to be time code zero. So to set that to time code zero, we go options, time code, set ruler zero to, to the cursor. It takes two seconds, it restarts, and now you'll notice that the cursor is exactly at time code zero and marker number one is exactly at time code two seconds. So now as we go to uh, the next track, you'll see that's 12 minutes, 32 seconds, 73 frames. That's 19, 30, 18, etc. So now it's showing you actual CD running time. So if you go all the way to the end, to your lead out marker here, that shows you that the full running time of this disc is one hour, one minute, 24 seconds, and 23 frames. That's the actual time code on the disk. If you want to see the runtime, you subtract two seconds from that. Or you can go back and set your time code to zero right at, at marker number one. Again, if I put my cursor at marker number one, time code to zero there. And now it's exactly at zero. And now if I go to marker 13, you can see the, the actual runtime of the disk is one hour, one minute, 22 seconds, and 23 frames. The other thing that you can do from this command is once you've done that command, it's also created all these regions. Each region is the precise length from track marker to track marker that you input. And each region is precisely named by the names that you put in the CD text, the exact same names. So you're already ready to output those with a single command. So now you just go to File, Consolidate, Render, Export, and to the regular render command. And in here, the bounds are going to be your project regions, of which I've got nine here, because this is a nine track CD. You'll see it says nine regions. You then set where you want to output it, etc. Usually when you're sending off to streaming places, you do 44.1, you might do 88.2, but probably 44.1 stereo. And then you're going to send them wave files are in some cases mp3 so you set this to wave 16-bit whatever formats you want you now click this render the nine files and you're done and it will immediately render your track by track files so in two clicks one to do the ddp image another click to do your wave render you're done and everything else is automatically taken care of now let me show you one more thing when it output the file, it output a text sheet too that you could read. So I'm going to show that to you right here. This one here is the one it just created. You see today, a couple of minutes ago. So if I open up this file, 
So now you see there's your listing with the title of the disk, when we printed it out, and track by track the pre-gap, the start, the end, and the duration, total playing time of the disk. And these numbers match exactly to the frame, everything you see on your screen. You can also verify that. This is the DDP image we just created. If you have another application that reads DDP images, you can load it right in and you're good to go, or you can send it off to the factory. I'll show you very quickly DDP Creator from Sonoris. Okay, there it is. And I'll say import DDP image. And the one we just created was called test DDP4, as I recall. This one, that's the one we just created. I click open. And there it is. It's already loaded up. And it's checking all the checksums and error checking all passed. There's your CD. So as you can see, this creates an industry standard red book perfect, sample accurate, frame accurate DDP master in one click from Kohler Classical. Everything you need to do in Kohler Classical is just one click away.